Imagine a vast, late Cretaceous floodplain. A lone hadrosaur grazes, suspecting nothing. Suddenly, a blur of motion, a juvenile Albertosaurus, lean and fast. It doesn't go for the kill. It darts to the side, flanking the herbivore. Another juvenile appears on the opposite flank, cutting off escape. The hadrosaur is trapped. Then the ground trembles as the Pax Matriarch emerges, ready to deliver the final bone-crushing strike. When you think Tyrannosaur, you probably picture a solitary king. But what if the deadliest predator of the Cretaceous wasn't a single animal, but a family? T. Rex's older, leaner cousin, Albertosaurus, might tell a different story. For a long time, we assumed it lived and hunted like T. Rex, all by itself. But a single spectacular fossil discovery in the badlands of Alberta, Canada, has flipped that assumption on its head and kicked off one of the hottest debates in modern paleontology. Our story begins at the dry island bone bed. First found in 1910, its true significance was not understood until paleontologist Philip Curry rediscovered it in 1997. He found a mass grave, the jumbled remains of at least 26 different Albertosaurus piled together. This group wasn't uniform. It was a mix of a very old adult, several adults in their prime, fast-growing teenagers, and even a few young juveniles. This raised a huge question. Why did so many of these predators all die in the exact same place at the same time? The evidence led Philip Curry to a radical conclusion. This was a pack, a complex social group that lived, hunted, and died together. But not everyone is convinced. Other paleontologists argue this could be the result of a catastrophe. Perhaps a severe drought drew these animals to a single shrinking waterhole, or a monster flood could have washed up the bodies of solitary animals and dumped them in one chaotic heap. So what's the more likely story? Studies of Albertosaurus growth patterns show they had very high death rates when young, living in a family group would have offered crucial protection. Then there's the hunt. The leg proportions of younger Albertosaurus show they were faster and more agile than the adults. This has led to a fascinating theory. Speedy youths acted like herding dogs, chasing prey towards the slower, but much stronger, adults. The adults would then be in position to deliver the devastating final blow. This division of labor would have made them an unbelievably effective killing machine. Science is a puzzle where new pieces change the entire picture. If you want to investigate next, so did Albertosaurus really hunt in organized packs? While we don't have definitive proof, the evidence is compelling. The dry island bone bed, with its mix of young and old, strongly suggests a social group. The different body types of juveniles and adults point to a clever, cooperative hunting strategy. Albertosaurus may have been a different kind of predator altogether, one that traded the brute force of a solo hunter for the strategic advantage of a team. They weren't just lone tyrants. They were the gangsters of the Cretaceous, a deadly family that used cooperation to rule their world. 